long before he became a household name in the US for reviving failing restaurants, Gordon Ramsay was already leaving a mark in the UK as a savior of struggling eateries. But in 2007, when he launched the American version of Kitchen Nightmares, he faced one of the most daunting challenges of his career. His target? Dylan's, a New York City restaurant teetering on the edge of collapse. And it was just a stone's throw away from Ramsay's own newly opened dining establishment. We've come to know Ramsay as an expert at rescuing businesses in crisis and empowering their owners to turn things around. Some have stood the test of time, while others haven't. But Ramsay's efforts are never half-baked. Yet, when it comes to Dylan's, it wasn't just bad food on the menu. The restaurant was a biological menace, making it a uniquely difficult case, even for Ramsay. This was one of the, if not the most, filthiest restaurants ever seen on the show. So, can Ramsay use his British tenacity to sort out Dylan's? Will this restaurant manage to rise from its own ashes and address not just its culinary, but also its alarming sanitation issues? And what became of its beleaguered donor and its trio of managers? Is Dylan still operating today? Sit tight, because this is one episode of Kitchen Nightmares where the kitchen isn't the only thing that's heating up. At the beginning of this episode, we travel to Manhattan, New York, to meet Dylan's Lounge, an Irish-American restaurant with an Indian twist. I know, it's weird. It's owned by Mohammed Islam, who opened the restaurant to improve his family's life. But unfortunately, good intentions are not enough to keep a business afloat. Due to his lack of experience, Mohammed has hired three managers. Martin is the general manager, Andrew is the operations manager, and Khan is the floor manager. But quantity does not guarantee quality, and that is why the rest of the staff is often confused when it comes to obeying a manager. While Martin is more of a host, Andrew is responsible for a lot of tasks, from repairing things to cooking, as Chef Farouk only knows how to prepare Indian food. And Khan, well, he's just Khan. In short, Dylan's is a management disaster, and they've been showing it in their accounts for some time. For the last six months, they've been losing 20,000 to 30,000 each month, which is why Muhammad himself called Ramsey for help. Speaking of Gordon, this time he didn't have to cross the entire country, as Dylan's is only two blocks from his own restaurant. If only he knew what they were hiding in the basement. As soon as he sits down at a table, Gordon notices a lot of flies hovering around the place. But more surprisingly, the menu spans two pages. You know, American, Irish, Indian style. Who is this busy for lunch? Oh, actually, it's a little busy today. I think that business model isn't working. Plus, the ghostly look of the place doesn't really help at all. The first thing Ramsay orders is a vegetarian sampler. And guess what? It has pieces of meat in it. The kitchen had only one customer and they still got it wrong. It's unbelievable. Then comes the beef buna and lamb biryani. As for the beef, it's actually pork, although Farouk insists otherwise. Uh, I almost forgot about the rotten tomato slices in the curry. The last dish is salmon niçoise, but it looks so bad that Ramsay says, Viva. Well, Andrew, it's your own dish. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, Gordon asks Muhammad to politely tell his chef that his cooking sucks and is making his stomach sick. And you know why? Because they served him old lamb, as they were nervous about his visit. Nothing better than welcoming one of the best chefs in the world and poisoning him. Everything that could go wrong for Dylan's went wrong. It almost seemed scripted. Eeny, meeny, mine and mo, catch your manager by the toe. And that's how Ramsay met the third manager, Khan, who was excited to save the restaurant. You think it's that funny and easy to do? Never meet your heroes. Later, Ramsey sees a staff dynamic in a dining service, and it doesn't take long for customers to get confused about the menu. 40 minutes later, diners are still waiting for their food, while the kitchen is an organizational mess with too many managers. Finally, Andrew takes over the expediting, although Martin, the general manager, was doing nothing, as was a chef who wasn't assigned any dishes. Thus, Ramsey accuses Martin of taking advantage of Muhammad's inexperience to make money for doing nothing. These are serious accusations, but your performance doesn't speak in your favor, Martin. General manager, general tosspot. After an hour and a half, the customers finally get their first dishes, although they would have rather kept waiting than eat any of it, I assume. 
I guess the flies will keep them entertained so they won't leave. Joking aside, many diners decided to leave. Now onto our favorite part, the kitchen inspection. And wow, this is one of the worst in Gordon's career. His first discoveries are rotten chunks of meat and lousy potatoes, the same ones they served in his salmon dish yesterday. Plus, there was some kind of sauce that even Farouk didn't even know what it was. After finding some green chicken wings, Ramsey decides to go to the source of the problem, the dingy, scary basement, home to cockroaches, rats, and everything else that shouldn't be in a restaurant basement. Every box is full of cockroaches, and not even the freezers are safe. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh no. As for the food, there are a lot of rotten vegetables, including a salad Ramsey ate recently. No wonder there are so many flies in the place. They must love the basement. After that, Ramsey shows his findings to Martin, who had no idea about the state of the basement. The worst part is that Gordon also found half of a rotten tomato, which means the other part has just been served. Tell him in your language he'll kill somebody! Of course, Ramsey was quick to close the restaurant, so Andrew had to dismiss the few diners they had, although they were already expecting it as Gordon's screams could be heard in the dining room. Now it's time to do something about all of this. Clean means a proper clean. Chef by day, steam cleaner by night. And he's not alone. The first phase of the operation is to identify all the rotten food and throw it away. The next part is to steam clean the entire kitchen until there's not a stain left. While the cleaners finish their work, Gordon invites Mohammed, Martin, and Andrew to his local restaurant to see what a clean kitchen should look like, as it always should. This is heaven, that was hell. Back at Dylan's, Ramsey plans a new menu focused on contemporary Indian food, though it's a bit tricky to show Farouk. I mean, that man doesn't even know he's in New York. But in the end, Farouk was able to understand and is actually so grateful to Gordon that he even hugs him. Please give a cuddle. Oh, okay, very, very good. Tell him he's only a scallop, yeah? And he doesn't know when to let go. For the relaunch of Dylan's, Gordon hires Vikas Khanna, one of New York's top Indian chefs. Better than Farouk? Meh, we'll see. After that, Gordon's team completely remodels the restaurant, removing the outdated electronic signage and renaming it Purnima, which means full moon. Dylan's used to be a depressing place full of white sheets that gave it a tetric air, but Purnima is the opposite. It's a cozy, well-lit restaurant with a vanilla color palette that suits it spectacularly. There are new chairs, tables, paintings, and other elements that make it look like a fine dining restaurant. But what about the food? Well, the cast was in charge of redesigning the menu with high-quality Indian food, with a Western touch to make it more appealing to Americans. Excellent dishes, but they wouldn't do much good if the staff doesn't live up to the new restaurant, especially Martin. So Gordon asks him to behave like a general manager for the first time. Although Martin assents to everything he says, his expression says otherwise. So Jenna, a waitress, tries to defend him. You don't need your mignon to try and convince me how good you are on the back of- The Martin and Gordon thing is getting personal. Finally, it's time for relaunch. And Purnima is packed with customers like never before. Vikas takes over the kitchen while Martin greets diners. Or at least that's what he should be doing. Since he's just in the kitchen doing nothing. But perhaps it was better that he stayed there. As when he returned to the dining room, he did nothing but mix up the orders. So the waitresses were confused. Productivity in the kitchen was going well up until that point, and the worst part is that a bowl of rice fell out of nowhere. So Ramsey calls Martin to clean it up. That's great. Finally found a job. Oh, no. Minutes pass, and the situation doesn't improve, as the staff isn't used to serving so many diners. Maybe that's a spoiler about their future. The few dishes they managed to deliver were cold, and Martin was just getting in the way. So Gordon decides to give an opportunity to the underrated manager. The great con, who went from being the most useless employee to the most productive in the place. Thanks to him, orders started to go out on time. In the end, the diners loved the food, and the relaunch ended up being a success. Who would think Khan would save the day? But that's just the start of the new Purnima. So Gordon suggests to Mohammed that if he wants a successful future, he should sacrifice one of his managers to hire Vikas full-time. I think we all know which manager he's referring to. At that point, Martin approaches Mohammed to remind him that he's worked very hard at his restaurant and has never tried to manipulate him. 
Well, that's exactly what you're trying to do now. And you've got the audacity to accuse me of, like, taking his money. And so began Martin's attempt to defend himself. But judging by the initial state of the restaurant, he did a terrible job as manager. I'm out of here. I quit. Goodbye, Martin. We'll miss you. Nah. Shortly after the original taping of the episode, Gordon returned to check on Purnima and was quite pleased that the changes took effect. The food was great. They were getting a lot of customers, and Vikas was hired as a consulting chef. Gordon congratulates Muhammad and the staff, earning another hug from Farouk. Definitely the MVP of this episode. But that wasn't Gordon's last visit to Purnima, as he returned a year later in one of his famous revisit episodes. The first to greet him is Andrew, who informs him that business has been going quite well. Many thanks to Vikas's experience, qualifying him as the leader of the restaurant. As for the kitchen, it looks spotless, with no trace of green chicken wings and rotting vegetables. Remember the nasty basement? Well, it's so clean now, you'd find it hard to believe it was once terribly dirty. Even Vikas often invites some customers to the basement to see its condition. Also, Muhammad reveals to him that the restaurant is pulling in eighteen dollars to $20,000 a month. Not bad, but the best part is that Farouk is still working there. As the last part of his visit, Gordon tries the food, and it's absolutely delicious. Purnima came back to life thanks to Gordon's help and Muhammad's efforts along with his best employees. But did they manage to hold on over time? What happened to Dylan's slash Purnima after the show? Although business seemed to be thriving and all the staff was happy, the restaurant closed in 2009. There is no official reason for this, but according to some reviews on Yelp and from a delish blogger, the food was average. Some found it delicious and others mediocre, but all agree that it was overpriced. Also, the place was almost always empty and there was overly loud music playing in the bar. But then, what happened to Muhammad? According to some rumors, he had problems with the owner of a nearby place that was damaging his restaurant, but it is uncertain whether it caused the closure. I would say he simply had bad luck and stopped receiving so many customers. Sometime later, the place reopened as Dylan's Comedy Club, apparently with Muhammad himself as the owner, but this bid also ended up failing. What about the rest of the main characters in this episode, or rather, the antagonist? What happened to Martin Hyde? Well, the best general manager of all sued Gordon in June 2007 for $1 million. Let's see, usually TV shows always have a part of exaggeration and certain scripted scenes to make them more entertaining. But Martin's case was completely real, and this complaint confirms it. Martin accused Gordon and his production team that they set up much of the episode to point to him as the culprit of the kitchen disaster, such as the rotten meat and the scenes where he did nothing. He also accused Ramsay of assault, because in his opinion, if someone puts their face inches away from his and insults him, it counts as assault. And while it's a little uncomfortable, I think you're a little wrong there, my friend. The entire complaint is 61 pages long, but in short, it's about Martin accusing the show of being fake and requested that the episode not be aired. Martin insisted that his case go to trial, although when he signed up for his appearance on Kitchen Nightmares, he agreed that if a legal problem emerged, it would go straight to arbitration. To his misfortune, a judge moved the case to arbitration, and there is almost no information on its resolution. We only have a statement from Gordon to Fox 42, in which he said he would never set up anything for his show, and that Martin spent too much on lawyers instead of recognizing that he was the problem with the restaurant. Martin came back in 2008 with an $800,000 lawsuit for damages to his reputation, but the case came to nothing. The last we heard from Martin was that he got a new job as a general manager at an exclusive limousine service in New York, but that was almost 15 years ago. Chef Vakas, on the other hand, became one of the top leaders in Indian food worldwide. Dylan's episode was an important inflection point for his career, and today he is a successful restaurateur, philanthropist, and even a filmmaker. Apart from participating in MasterChef India and a Hell's Kitchen finale as a judge, Vakas has written many cookbooks and directed the film The Last Color, which was screened at the 69th Keynes Film Festival, as well as several culinary documentaries. If you want to enjoy Vikas's food, then visit his Michelin-starred restaurant, Janoon, in New York. Not bad, Vikas. Not bad at all. Finally, we have Andrew. He has been an executive chef for Flick International, but is currently a freelance writer and a blogger for websites such as the Huffington Post and Backtrack. The best part is that since they met in this episode, Andrew and Vikas have maintained a wonderful friendship, 
to the point that Andrew was Janoon's manager for a while and contributed to several of Vikas's books and documentaries. So, as you can see, even out of a bad situation can come something good and enduring.